And it looks like they're just setting out those prize cards as we begin here. London, are you ready for your grand finals? Let's take a look at these prizes, Mike. We've got that puppet offering, Burnett there, an opportunity to recycle some of those supporters. But other than that, nothing too crazy from both sides, and that's what's key in this matchup. Hopefully it means we get a good game coming. Yeah, the mana fee when you're worried about a Greninja would certainly be concerning in the prize cards, but no water energy on the other side, so feeling pretty safe. And that rare candy, I mean, we're not up against William this time, towards, so nothing to worry about from a TM Devolution perspective. It's going to be those Iron Leaves EX attacks, the Giratina V-Star with that Star Requiem to take down those Charizard EX. With the backup support of the Barrel Engine, Tor doesn't even need to use that Pidgeot EX. As they get started, the handshake, the basic reveal, and it will be Isaiah to kick things off. Game one of this TCG Masters European International Championships final here. Shuppet up against that Charmander. Yeah, and that Shuppet can be useful early on. A great little attack to just reduce the damage, but that's not what you want to see. Just an attached pass for Isaiah. Not a great start. When you're going first, you do want to start ramping up some of those Lost Zone cards into that area as soon as possible. Sword won't be attacking anytime soon, though, so a little reprieve there for Isaiah, just for the moment at least, as we do kick things off with a Luminion V, that Luminion Sign ability, a well-known staple in a lot of Tord's decks, being able to grab a supporter of your choice from your deck, an opportunity as well to just double-check those prizes. Yeah, you see bringing that Cleffer to the front. <laughs> that grasping draw, a lovely little addition from some of our most successful Charles RDX players. A way to almost replicate the Rotom V instant charge using a card that is possible to search for with Buddy Buddy Poffin. And the Arvin off the Luminous Sign to get a Buddy Buddy Poffin and a Forest Seal Stone. A typical beginning here for Charizard, where for Isaiah that is far from optimal. Yeah, that Forest Seal Stone, Star Alchemy, a fantastic ability that can be applied to your V Pokemon. Just gives a quick search ability nice and early as an option. Or if it's not necessarily needed to begin with, maybe you can grab it mid to late turn as well. Fantastic utility and lots of these setup decks. It must be nerve-wracking right now for Isaiah. He's just flipped over the basic attach and is watching towards setup pretty much perfectly here. And we'll just be thinking about his top deck, what's in his hand, what's available, can he stabilize? Lossone Giratina has historically been one of those decks that can be a bit slow at starting. But as we saw earlier on in the Juniors final, you know, the Lossone engine can get those early attacks off with Cramoran. It can go either way, depending on how those early flower selectings go. But just going to have to watch and wait and see what else Tord can do to set up that board for future turns. As we've already sort of highlighted there, we're likely to see that Cleffer come into the active. It is a great pivot option as well. Has free retreat. Only 30 HP, so it can go down to something quite easy, like a Sableye. But we do see the energy attachment, retreat cost, and the grasping draw Cleffer in the active spot now. Has Tord play down his hand pretty low. He's got four in hand. Potentially goes down to three with that attachment of the Defiance Band <laughs> on the Cleffer as well. And just and lost get rid vacuum. of it. Get as many cards off that grasping draw as possible. Love the value there by Tord Reclev, being as consistent as possible. A draw six from that grasping draw, and back over to Isaiah. Well, anyone who put that Cleffer away into your binders, make sure you can remember which page it's on, because it is a very powerful card right now. That free retreat, an underrated aspect of many of those support cards. Uh, we saw Dunsparce have its moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we did. I think just having a free retreat, as well as a great early game effect, can be so key, and that's oh, the starting oh, hand. tough. Do That's you put the Iron Leaves down just to have something that can survive? Rapid Vernier, usually a fantastic ability to bring energies around your board to be able to just start swinging away with that Prism Edge attack. It's just a Jet Energy attachment here. Advantage toward just from that scenario, and we're looking at Tord's hand now. So many options, plethora of choices, Rare Candy, Ultra Ball, Charizard EX. Iono, he's not going to be playing anytime soon, I'm sure. Well... You've just tuned in and you're not aware of the A spec choice in Tord's deck. He does play Prime Catcher, where if there was the maximum belt, which has been chosen by the majority of Charizard EX players at this event, would have been able to get the knockout here on the Iron Leaves. But I do believe it's going to be safe here. And that's probably a little bit of a, a breather moment for Isaiah as he's going to look to see what the top deck available is. Oh, the 
rare candy into the Pidgeot, just stabilizing that board for Tord. Everything in his control now. And Isaiah is just relying completely on the top deck going forward. Yeah, he can't feel great right now. Just staring down at Tord, effectively being able to select on this turn, if he wanted to do so, any two guards because he has access to that quick search, which he's utilizing now. Gets that Bidoof down as well as a bit of a fail-safe if that Pidgeot ever goes down. You can see prepping those three energy at the front as well. As he's going to look to potentially evolve the Charizard here. There we go. Charizard X down. Who needs anything else? This is exactly what you want on your second turn. Two energies going on that Pidgeot EX as an option as well. Obviously, he doesn't want to necessarily put forward the Charizard EX because it is, does have that grass weakness and with it's not currently being able to knock out the Iron Leaves EX with its burning darkness attack. If we could just start softening up with blustery wind to begin with, then we can, I'm sure, see two prizes taken very soon. Well, who would have thought the first attack of our Charizard EX versus Losso and Giratina would be a blustery wind into an Iron Leaves. But this is how it goes. Sometimes the cards don't fall, and that was the grass energy off the top. So if he had attacked with that Charizard EX, it would have been the return knockout, but now Isaiah has to work out how to stabilize around the change of plan from Tor, just recognizing that a Grass Energy could be possible here and using the Pidgeot EX safe from that instant return knockout. Turn three, and we still haven't been able to get any Lost Zone cards into play at the moment, and it's just a Prism Edge attack, 180 damage that will be dealt to that Pidgeot EX safe from being taken as a KO, hits the Iono off the top, but let's face it, we're not gonna see that anytime soon. Opportunity also to try and find that with Barrel if necessary, but Quick Search being utilized first. Find anything you want. Quick Search plus the Barrel, so stable. And you know, people were discussing, do I go for the Be Barrel version of Charizard? Do I go for the Pidgeot? Tord said both. And now he's sat here in the final with a very consistent deck, opposing Isaiah, who's been consistent throughout and just started so poorly here. I mean, best of three. We'll be thinking ahead, potentially about future turns, but just trying to find a way to squeak out of this early frustration. Yeah, play out every opportunity you can for the time being. We do have additional time for the top cuts, especially this Masters final as well. So being able to just play to every one of your small percentages that are available to you that's what Isaiah has to do for the time being. Before he's thinking about it, we do see the pop of the star alchemy now as well. Another fantastic utility just to grab any card Tord would like from his deck. As it looks like he's targeting that Professor Truro scenario as a fantastic way to kind of just eliminate that turn. Could go for collapsed, but with the Professor Truro scenario, we'll be able to reuse that Luminion on future turns and keep that bench space nice and wide so it wants to set up future attackers protect that Pidgeot EX as well, and also gets those energies off the Pidgeot, because it does have free retreat, so there's no way to kind of very easily remove it from the actual Pidgeot EX itself without using Professor Hero's scenario, and then that way it could be super rotted back into the deck, and then just kind of start recycling some of those energies that are ever so important when you're running quite a low number. Yeah, a lot of people get very concerned about leaving someone like Luminium V or Rotom V on the bench. Um, when you're in this position, you're very comfortable, you can remove it. But a lot of the time for Charizard EX, it just increases that damage output. And so it can be worth just using the Luminium V as a, as a target for your opponent as they won't remove your Pidgeot EX or your Charizard, which you want to keep in play. As we do see the retreat now from that Pidgeot EX, free retreat, such a fantastic pivot option. That Burning Darkness will be taking the KO on that Iron Leaves EX, leaving us there with just a shop it. What is that top deck? Chorus experiment, that's sort of what you needed a bit earlier, but it might help you get going now. Still a long way to come back here. Just keeping him in the game at this point. Every little card that he can identify. Plenty oh. of full search. There's the Kiratina V as well. Knowing it is still out of range of an easy one-hit KO, for the time being at least. It would have been nice to see those a bit earlier on, I'm sure is the thought here. There is the Forest Seal Stone, an interesting inclusion to add to Giratina V-Star when it has such a powerful V-Star attack itself. Yeah, for different matchups maybe because of that inclusion of the Burnett EX and Burnett lines. Maybe sometimes it's more important just to be able to either get into the game, add that additional consistency. Doesn't maybe need the one-hit 
um, KO potential utilizing Star Requiem. So let's just utilize something like Star Alchemy to really get myself into the game. And if only he had grabbed or was able to get a V Pokemon down earlier, could have used that to just get into the game and maybe swing this around. Well, Tord set up completely, taking a knockout, sitting there with everything on board ready to keep going. Meanwhile, Isaiah taking those first looks through the deck to try and set things up here. It's not often you see this, but you know, it can happen at any moment. And that's why we play best of three, to give those players the chance when it does go a little bit wrong to come back into a future game. But right now, Isaiah does have a way to get back into the game with that ability to take big knockouts. There's just too much consistency on the board for Tord with the Bibarrel and the Pidgeot EX to maybe confirm that. But with that early damage on the Pidgeot EX, it is in range of some of those single prize attackers. Yep, I mean, just having to now try and get into those Lost Zone counters ramped up to at least a seven to begin with, start utilizing things like the Mirage Gate. That Shop It and the Active can evolve to the Minette with that Puppet Offering can start to help to burst into that Lost Zone threshold, as it were, because to hit the Star Requiem, you will need that 10 in the Lost Zone as well. And of course, that Pidgeot EX still susceptible to potential attack, maybe something like the Lost Mine Sableye further down the line. As we do see a Star Alchemy being utilized from Isaiah's side as well, just trying to make sure he can get into the game right now. Remember, plenty of time on the board. Well, Star Requiem no longer possible this game. But with that Iron Leaves, you can take those knockouts, the one-hit knockouts with that attacker. And, and with the Pidgeot EX available, that could be a way to take two prizes at some point. You know, you've got the Cleffer on board. So there's lots of options for things like Sableye down the line. And that'll be the key journey Isaiah's taking now to try and build that loss count up to 10. Only worrying thing here, of course, Tord. Currently two prizes up in this matchup due to Isaiah's slow start. Can go down to three. Tord has to be wary of that because then you're within range of that awful, awful card, Roxanne. <laughs> you say that. When you've got a bit barrel and a Pidgeot EX in play, I feel like Roxanne doesn't have the same effect as it can do. We've seen Roxanne win so many games throughout the weekend, just that turn where it switches it from one side to the other. In fact, in towards semi-final, it felt like Roxanne was the win condition for both players, so whoever went ahead was often the one who ended up losing due to that Roxanne effect. But on this occasion, just gonna be putting that Giratina into the active, and uh, a great way to start building up that loss count a little bit quicker using that Abyss Seeking. Yep, look at the top four cards of your deck. Choose two to put into your hand. The other two do hit that lost zone there. So we'll be heading to the four threshold, giving the opportunity for that Cramorant to be available and live to attack. Lost provisions, a fantastic ability for him not to be able to, well, for him to be able to use Spit innocently quite soon. Well, we heard their previous match. It was described as being a little bit scuffed due to not finding a psychic energy. I think on the, the scale of scuffedness, Isaiah would certainly be putting this quite up there, but is starting to find a way back in, and that's the key. Um, has got a great comeback potential as a deck, and so we'll begin to try and do that, while Tord's damage output is a little bit lower with that Burning Darkness. So Ultra Ball now uh, for Tord, thinning out that deck uh, of cards you don't need and finding those cards you do need. And, one great card there, the Charmeleon that probably wanted to be featured a little bit more in the semi-final with the TM Devolution, yep. but uh, has a great utility as a way to get that Charizard into play. Yeah, sometimes now not necessary to always utilize something like that Jirachi in decks, but it has its own self-protection from effects of attacks with that Flare Veil ability. Fantastic inclusion in a lot of decks and just gives towards a bit of contingency should this Charizard EX ever go down in a crazy world where maybe there's a knockout here from Isaiah, and then it's just finding that Charizard EX piece to then just continue chaining into attacks. Yeah, we saw that uh, a little bit where the Roxanne would be asking, does a Pidgeot EX have one of two pieces? But uh, on this occasion, you'd only need the one, and that'd be the Charizard EX. But an Iron O to be played by Tord, just to try and disrupt that larger hand Isaiah was building up. All the cards selected off of the, uh, the Colrus and the Abyss Seeking you know they're going to be better cards than the ones that were in the Lost Zone, and some pretty good cards went into the Lost Zone there. So Tord recognizing the value of that hand and wanting to get rid of it. Yeah, and now heading straight to the bottom of the deck, of course. So getting them as far away from Isaiah's hand as possible. Not too sure what else 
is that it could be drawing into there as Todd continues drawing up with the barrels industrious incisors first and then utilizing that fantastic quick search ability from that Pidgeot EX, tutoring any card he wishes from the deck. As he's just eyeing up once again another Iono to continue causing a little bit of disruption for his ASOS side of the board because he doesn't have to worry about anything when he can continuously draw. I mean, the collapsed stadium is still in play as well, and that's reducing the amount of options for Isaiah to put down basics in the future. Might try and find a way to remove that so he can go wide with those flower selecting. It's still only four in the loss zone. You know, typically at this stage of the game, you'd be having Mirage Gates online, you'd be having potential to get to that 10 in the loss zone, to start using either Star Requiem or Sableye, but still at four, and that was not ideal. So just an attack, 180 damage into the active Giratina V. We'll set it up for a future two hit knockout. For now, Isaiah having to see what's in that hand off of the Iono and whether that increased loss zone count can happen this turn. Looked like a stadium bounce was in hand as well. So continue going a little bit wider with those comfits if required. You know, hasn't given up the prize here as we kick things off with a chorus experiment that will push Isaiah up to six, a couple more, and then maybe utilizing that public offering could get him to that 10. And that on the next turn, I'm sure it's going to be very vital to maybe start thinking about targeting down alongside of Roxanne that the barrel or the Pidgeot that is currently in play because it's been weakened and softened up already. But let's see going forward whether that's going to be an option for him. Well, for now, we see that chorus experiment. That'll put two more in the loss zone. And with one flower selecting, that would be enough. The puppet offering for net was in the prize cards as well. So that would have been a nice way to increase the loss zone count. Um, the Radiant Greninja there. Now, that's an interesting card that you could often see being an attacker in Giratina. But the way Isaiah's built his deck, it's just here for that consistency. Yeah, you've mentioned it before when... A card's included for his fantastic attack and still utilized without the energies that allows it to be able to do so. You know just how strong that card is. There's always been a bit of a small debate. Generally, Greninja's kind of won, but there's two fantastic Radiant Pokemon in both of these players' decks. Radiant Charizard in Tord's deck, of course, as a fantastic single prize attacker. And that Radiant Greninja allowing just to give a consistency option just to be able to draw cards with concealed cards where you discard one energy of your choice into your discard, you get to draw two cards. It allows you to build up those massive hand sizes with the Lost Engine, with Flower Selecting, Colrus, Concealed Cards. And at this stage, we'll be able to get to seven in the Lost Zone, activating that Mirage Gate. There is one in hand. One got put into the Lost Zone earlier. But do you really want to be attacking with Giratina V-Star at this stage? Because you can't use Star Requiem. You don't have the, the maximum belt to be able to take those large knockouts. So the Giratina V is vulnerable to be attacking into that Charizard, and the Pidgeot EX has already taken some damage, so you don't need it for that. Yeah, a couple of options. I mean, could utilize the Cramorant to soft, start softening up on that active Charizard EX before anything like a Giratina V-Star can come swinging with a Lost Impact, but it is a counter catcher here, again, starting to identify that weakened Pidgeot EX, removing it from play into the discard pile just through an at easy attack because it's already taken 180 damage from that Prism Edge attack. It's got 100 HP left, and what sort of feasts on anything that has 110 HP and lower? That Cramorant just sat on the bench. Perfect timing for it. Isaiah has restabilized wonderfully here, and uh, that softening up of the Pidgeot EX with the Iron Leaves may be more valuable than expected, as the Cramorant is in range, and that will disrupt Tord's ability to continue getting the cards of choice out of the deck. Yeah, the concern from Isaiah here will likely need to try and get a Giratina V onto the board as well, trying to give a bit of a buffer, because right now it's just that damage Giratina V is there. So maybe I didn't quite see, maybe saw incorrectly that there was a stadium bounce, so there's no opportunity to put another Giratina V down. And it does leave a damaged one that's easy to be targeted if Tord can either search, well, wouldn't be able to necessarily search because that Pidgeot EX is going down, but draw into something like that boss's orders. There we go. Despite the early acceleration into the game, Tord going ahead with those two prizes. It has been leveled up here by Isaiah, knocking out the Pidgeot EX. And there we have the free retreating Cleffa straight into the active. 
And I think I've caught a glimpse of that prime catcher, that wonderful ace spec card that we've seen included in so many decks across this weekend. Just in hand, I mean, we've already mentioned how great that pivot is, even without the Pidgeot EX, having another one on the board available just means that Tord can take his moment to really think about how best to utilize his turn. We do see the Super Rod coming down as well. It's like he's putting back the Luminium V and a couple of energies that I said was already stuck on that Pidgeot EX. Yeah, meanwhile, that Forest Seal Stone that was utilized earlier on by Isaiah, despite being great to set up early, it does take away one of your best options to knock out the Charizard EX, that Star Requiem. So from Tord's point of view, he knows that knocking out the Giratina V takes it out of range of being able to take a big knockout with the Lost Impact, forces something like the Iron Leaves into play, and if that takes a knockout on the Charizard EX, just send the next one up and finish it off. And so this mapping here from Tord will just go 2-2-2 two, two, two and finish off the game. And if not, Isaiah has a lot of work to be done with those single prizes. Yeah, that's exactly what Tord was able to give us a little bit of insight in his thinking earlier before as we caught up with him, where every time Isaiah would want to try and take a big knockout, there's going to be a two-prizer on the board somewhere for me to start swinging back as well. And especially with Isaiah already taking some prizes, we do see the prime catch here on that damaged Giratina V. This is going to be another big, massive two prizes taken here from Tord. There's the Jirachi coming down as well, offering further protection for his board and disruption. Everything coming on here together. That prime catcher is so key. Without the Pidgeot EX, wasn't able to tutor it out, but had it in hand, ready to go. And you see how powerful it is. The debate between Maximum Belt and Prime Catch in the Charizard EX list, it does reduce your potential for early knockouts on the small EXs and the final knockouts on opposing Charizard EX. But that Prime Catcher turn plus Iono can be so dangerous in these big moments. And this is exactly why Tord will be going down to two prize cards remaining whilst Isaiah has nothing ready to return knockout on his side. Burning Darkness now for 240 damage. Two prizes taken from Isaiah's board state. Increases the damage output of the base 180 by further 30 damage for each prize taken. So 240 right now is the base damage. Those Giratina Vs, if they ever do come back down onto the board, are going to be in trouble. Well, Charizard EX in the active spot. Try and knock that out. You've got another one to come forward. Try and disrupt. You've got a barrel on the bench. You want to try and use Sableye? Protection already there. So everything now toward set up to finish off this game. Isaiah knows plenty of time, so he can just work out a potential route to victory, looking to navigate through these final turns. Just checking that discard pile. And, I mean, at this stage of the tournament, these players tend to have a pretty good grasp of the opponent's list, especially as both of these are featured on the stream before. So they'll be coming in with pretty good knowledge of what to expect. And throughout the tournament, that's some, one of those key aspects. Playing out that first game to kind of see the game plan, see what strategies they might be using, see the, the cards they've got available. Great way to get knowledge. And Isaiah just uh, trying to build up that loss count a little bit more and see what's possible. Yeah, just that flower selecting there. Looks like it was the option between the Ultra Ball, the one-off copy that we don't usually see too much in Lost Zone, Giratina V-Star decks, but utilized because he also plays net EX as an option as well as we now see the concealed cards here just tilted across with that psychic energy pitched away chorus experiment found but do we have enough time here if he benches a Pokemon V that is right now very susceptible to a big burning darkness attack and can quite easily give toward the final two prizes he needs to take this game one well slow start shows exactly why that can be challenge for any player and uh, Tord really set up I would say perfectly this game it felt like he got everything he needed in those turns and going to be using that Cramorant to attack into the barrel and leaving just... it with 10 HP remaining all as they can do right now not giving Tord the opportunity to win on this turn of course because only will be able to take out a single prizer Tord just playing out his hand here some of those Tool cards, a little bit less relevant for this moment in time because there's no Vs around. As we do see an Arvin being played here. Such a commanding position. Board State pretty much ready for anything that can come his way. 
I think we got to take a moment here to appreciate that Todd beat a Snorlax deck in the quarterfinal. And the reason being, he's built his deck around taking those liabilities out of the active spot with those Professor Turo scenarios. Yeah, it was more, more Pidgeot control, if I recall correctly. Um, but obviously utilizes Snorlax's block as well. But it, yes, it's, it's one of the most scary things to be facing up against when you're a Charles RDX player, or even a Chen Pao player, for example. Just being able to be stopped in terms of any way of trying to build your board state, bringing up some of those really, really annoying Pokemon like the Klepper, and won't be able to do too much. But, you know, this is why he's been able to build his deck in a particular way, putting a lot of respect on this control archetype as it's just a pass over after the industrious incisors, I believe. Yeah, no need to rush at this stage. You've got, you got a little bit of a lead here, Tord, so you don't need to rush into anything. But Isaiah trying to navigate a, an alternative win condition. And again, it's something we see our top players doing here at EUIC. When the game appears to be lost, they find a way through those final turns to navigate an unusual win condition and really try and find the best solution. And a lot of the time it can be stuff like putting something in the active and just passing so they deck out. You know, crazier things have been seen. Uh, and at this stage, Isaiah trying to find some ways to beat this deck out. Yeah, I mean, we've seen... These types of decks, these Lost Zone engine decks, trying to utilize things like Sableye, typically when the later game stages are sort of formed and you hit that 10 in the Lost Zone, which this Coruscant experiment will put Isaiah up to, but Tord sort of read what was coming along, that Jirachi hit in that field on the previous turn, really stops all of that kind of potential comeback um, chances there for Isaiah. But, you know... I'm not the one in this driving seat right now. I'm sure he's got a bit of an idea of how he could try and turn his game around as it is just a pass for the time being. We do see another Arvin coming down for that ultra wall, maybe trying to thin out the hand to start reaching towards those Professor Truro scenarios as soon as possible. Has that great unique inclusion as well for some of those control archetypes. That team yells cheer also in hand, so can continue to chain them. And that's exactly what you would try and do with this deck against such a Typically bad matchup. Yeah, with Charizard, they've had Switch card included in the past, the Professor Turo scenario. Meanwhile, Todd has two Professor Turo scenarios, the Team Yell Cheer, so effectively can play four Professor Turo scenarios throughout a game. But equally, sometimes the win condition that you play towards the end of the game when you feel like you're out would be maybe that one important card is prized. Mm -hmm. And that can often be enough. You know, there is a way to win if a certain card is left in the prize cards. So we might see a little bit of passing back and forth here until Tord finds his way out of this, the barrel lock in the active. Yeah, the direction here is that now Isaiah has to try and maybe set up an attacker as a potential option as well. He's gained a couple of turns here with that the barrel trapped in the active spot. It's all about thinking about whether maybe, as you've already highlighted, maybe that Professor Jura scenario is prized, maybe one of those is prized, and maybe he only has access to one and maybe a further um, gusting up of it once again could potentially deck out toward, for example. You have to play to all of these small percentages, and that's what we're seeing here as well. Yeah, maybe gust up the Jirachi, knock that out, and then find a way to lock Tord for a few more turns and then set up a Charizard. There is ways here, but you're asking a lot to, to have the time to be able to do that. And that's part of these win conditions is you're not expecting to win, but you know there is a way to win. So you're going to give it a good go and see if you can find out if it's possible. Yeah, some really tough choices here. A couple of super rods, it looks like, in that hand there, as we do see the poker gear, that one-off copy opportunity to try and search out, because you typically early on want to be chaining those choruses experiments as much as you can, which unfortunately Isaiah was not able to do early on. I'm just kind of double-checking now. It looks like that Giratina V-Star is also there as well. Roxanne. Only the one, words. only the one Roxanne in the deck. So if we can combine a potential knockout with, on this big barrel with the Roxanne, does limit what Tord has out to. It becomes a really, really tricky scenario here. He's so here playing it through in his mind every single step possible. There's a lot of tension in here as we watch <laughs> to see if Isaiah can find a way and I think it's just going to be a pass there, hoping to gain one more turn. Try and find a route to victory. 
And it's just a pass back, that hand clogged up, no barrel. So Isaiah looking to try and find those cards. It's going to be passes back and forth quickly between the players as we accelerate towards a potential win condition for either player. Is this it? Is this one opportunity for you? But Tord does have that team yells here. He doesn't, he isn't to know that. He's playing to every out possible. He's back and forth, finally hit a card he's wanted. There it is, Professor Juro's scenario. This is an opportunity now for Tord to now just start wrangling it back into his control, despite having that barrel trap for so long. But the problem is, you bring that barrel back up, you then don't have a barrel in play to utilize. And so that's where that Roxanne could come in so, so effective in the next turn, there will be the Charizard to be able to promote to the active and be able to take an attack. But can Tord set up the board in a way that he's protected from these end turns? He's playing out some of those cards, maybe using that Buddy Buddy Poppin just to get it out of hand, knowing maybe that Roxanne's coming. He will go down to one prize though, and it's only just, that's all he needs to really think about. If he takes this knockout, goes down to one prize, all he needs is to be able to find one piece of the puzzle to take the final prize to take game one. But Isaiah here, you know, forcing that barrel pick up with the Professor's true scenario, of Roxanne now will impact toward quite a bit. So just getting that energy back. I think the only liability on board for Tord is the Jirachi. Mm -hmm. If that comes into the active, it has a one retreat cost. Otherwise, the Charizard can attack and the Cleffa has a free retreat. So it needs that energy back in for the Jirachi. Uh, place six energy in the list, so I think the other one must be prized. Gonna put that Bidoof back down. And now it's on Isaiah. Played for the deck out. And suddenly Tord revealed the Professor Turo scenario. Now what, Isaiah? What's your plan here? You've tried one thing. What other options do you have? So it's really tense here. Just Isaiah just yeah, I think he's kind of seen the writings on the wall. He tried to slow it down as much as he can, but Tord has taken game one of this. EUIC Masters final here. Advantage toward Reckler. Well, you've got to respect Isaiah for finding that lock, finding that situation where they were both draw passing to see if he could deck out toward Reklev. But Tord knew the whole time he had that Professor Turo scenario in deck. Isaiah, as we mentioned, he's going to be aware of the list, but he might think it could be prized. Maybe he, cause he used one already, right? So maybe, maybe it was removed from play. Who knows? The Professor Turo scenario, a key pivotal card for Tor to get out of those locks that we've seen so effective by the controlling archetypes that have been played here at EUIC. Useful in this scenario, but that Iron Leaf start got the first bit of damage on the board, and it was the Pidgeot EX that took the first attack. It's three turns before we even got going here by Zaya. But don't worry, just got to compose yourself. Look, you've spoken about some scuff games that you've had before in this matchup, specifically against Tord in Swiss, where Tord sort of took so much advantage here by that slow start. But, you know, game two is a new game. You're going to have to just try and utilize every piece of the puzzle in your own deck to try and bring us back round. Well, the start couldn't have gone much worse for Isaiah with that Shuppet attached pass. This moment here, I've never seen two players draw pass as fast as they did, but the Professor Turo scenario was the solution for Tord Reklev in those final moments. Isaiah recognizing that and will be going into game two now, uh, where the advantage, like you mentioned, is going to be in Tord's favor. Plenty of time for the final to play out. A best of three here. Just one more game required for Tord. Meanwhile, Isaiah has to try and find two victories. <laughs> It's going to be a tough one now after seeing how that first game went. You know, the, the, the consistency of these two decks is definitely more reliable in Charizard EX, where Lost Zone Giratina has historically been its own worst nightmare, as we saw in game one. It's now going to be on Isaiah to say, look, I have flower selecting. I have ways to switch. I have options available as they put their prize cards out. Some important prize cards there. That prime catcher sat in the prizes alongside that Rotom V, not necessarily utilized in the first game as we do kick off here our game two of the Masters TCG final and it'll be Tord going first with that Charmander the actor spot Isaiah there with that Radiant Greninja. Well, Radiant Greninja a better start than the Shuppet I feel but maybe uh, maybe in some matchups you'd want to start with that Shuppet and try and disrupt the item cards early but on this occasion 
We'll probably be happy to get some draw going. It just depends on what the rest of that hand is, and by going second, we'll be able to utilize a chorus experiment in their first turn. But Tord able to set up nice and wide with another Charmander coming down, as well as that Pidgey. Yep, I mean, we saw it in the first game. That Shuppet could have tried to disrupt for a little bit. That enveloping shadow attack requires a psychic energy, though, which Isaiah did not have in hand, just the grass and the... Jet energies that were available to him, but flip a coin if heads during your opponent's next turn. They can't play any item cards. That would have been one way to just slow down the game as Isaiah was trying to draw out of it. But here, right now, this game to Buddy Buddy Poffin has kicked things off for Tord. We'll be able to have double Charmander in play with that Pidgey as well. And we'll see how else he can build out the board as Isaiah will be looking at his hand, I'm sure, thinking it can't get any worse than what I had in game one, surely. Just looking across the hall at all you lovely people with your eyes locked on the screen, wanting to see how this early setup is going to go. And Isaiah will be hoping to get that lost count nice and high. As concealed cards available to begin with, grass energy and a nest ball, so things can start. Does have Chorus's experiment in hand, it looks like, as well. So, better options than, than game one. Let's see five cars take three to your hand to go to the loss zone. Ooh, I mean, some important cards there. The Manaphy, a nice, easy decision. Forest Seal Stone, you really want to try and keep that Star Requiem this time. The rest of those cards were mighty important in the matchup. Forest Seal Stone is more of a contingency plan mm -hmm. in this matchup, which we saw last time. Uh, so we'll be happy to get rid of that. A couple of more easier choices. Could have had been had, but here we go. Nest Ball here, I'm sure, is going to be going through that deck, figuring out what has been prized. I don't believe there was too many things there that you know, will come as a shock for Isaiah's side. Can build out his board and start going really wide and trying to just put those cards in the loss zone as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, the boss's orders, there's only one of those in the list, if I recall correctly, and the, uh, the Burnett puppet offering would yeah, be used to recycle it, but... Um, at this stage, Chorus Experiment, the more preferred supporter, especially when you've got the Prime Catcher available for gusting if you need it, and Counter Catcher if you get behind. I'm just going to be checking those energy cards there, making sure they're all about. And as mentioned, those Flower Selecting Come Phase are key in these early turns. So I'm wanting to try and chain as many of those as possible. Yeah, we know how important resource management is in our Pokemon trading card game. And this is just one of those first early ways to try and figure out exactly what you have access to, what you will be able to build your board state to, having already, for example, lost zoned a couple of pieces. Sometimes those lost zones can be tricky if you don't know what's going on in your deck. And this is why it's so vital. And this is why Isaiah is also one of those players who does take notes as well. And here we do see the Giratina V can maybe start to try and utilize that Abyss Seeking to kind of burst into the 10 as soon as possible. A further two could go in necessarily go for the conface if not available to him yeah only the nest ball available if there was a buddy buddy poffin it would have been a slightly different scenario but the giratina v with the abyss seeking has been a big factor in this matchup even in the pre-rotation format just because the giratina v is out of range of that first charizard x attack when no prize cards have been taken only 180 damage no matter the damage modifier, that Giratina V can survive. So it is safe in the active spot after using Abyss Seeking. And so the Jet Energy to move it to the active, Abyss Seeking, and a much more solid start here for Isaiah Bradner. Yeah, you can just have this scenario. Be quite comfortable with this board state to begin with. You know, typically we'd have some comfies down, but might not be as necessary when you just don't have the cards available to yourself as you will be going up to four in the Lost Zone. That Cramorant as well, used as an easy, efficient attacker. Doesn't want to start taking prizes, start putting himself in range of the Burning Darkness attack with a damage modifier as well. So just knowing he's safe from any sort of big knockouts on his Giratina V and Abyss Seeking, putting some of those less useful cards into the Lost Zone there. Ooh, Rare Candy Pidgeot EX, a nice way to kick things off here. Find any important cards you need. And for the rest of that hand, well, there's a Charmeleon. It's a good little start, and the disruption plus uh, a little bit of an attack at this stage after that large hand was gathered for Isaiah could be a great way to kick things off. Yeah, 
could start to chip away as well at Akihotina B if he chooses to do so. We've already seen Tord heat tackle his way through some big Pokemon, but just trying to figure out what was available. There was that Clefer in hand, so could have taken a bit of a slower approach if he wanted to do so. The hand there has Ultra Ball, has a way to quick search for the wreck. Handy as well, Buddy Buddy Poppin also trying to grab maybe the Bidoof out. We saw how vital that piece of the puzzle was in your game plan toward Reclef. So let's see the first Buddy Buddy Poppin here from the hand being utilized. That Bidoof maneuver to the front of that deck very quickly. And the Jirachi too. I mean, you mentioned the Cleffer. Without the Jirachi in play, it's just an easy part of a Sableye attack. That Lost Mine sprinkling 12 damage counters into play. But with the Jirachi on the bench, only the active is a target for the Sableye. So a great way to reduce the damage output of the Lost Mine. Can't take multiple prize cards with it in one turn. So Jirachi, a key part of this matchup. Quick Search being activated now. And a fantastic ability. We've spoken about, uh, spoken about it a lot throughout this weekend. Excuse me. So just being able to choose any card you'd like for the matchups that you're facing up against. Such a key component for this deck. We've had discussions amongst us, amongst the crowds, amongst online about which engine is best of a partner for Charizard. Well, how about both? Seems to be the key. Especially when you're in a deck that doesn't want to be taking one prize card at a time, you want to be taking those two prize knockouts. If the Barbarrel is there as a backup option, it can protect you after, say, something like a Roxanne, which has been a game-swinging card throughout the tournament. So Tord stabilized similarly to the first game, but rather than opting to attack with the Charizard this time, well, first time was Pidgeot EX, but rather than choose to attack with the two prize Pokemon, We'll be looking to use that Heat Tackle Charmander in the active. Yeah, just for the moment. Knowing as is not able to really disrupt towards hand, he just kind of targeted a particular Pokemon, which was the Barrel from that quick search, just readying it for future turns, and then has to kind of react then on how Azeo is able to play out his turn. Well, similarly to the last game, that Iono was played against Isaiah when Isaiah had just used Abyss Seeking and the Chorus Experiment, so choosing the best cards out of all of that draw support. And with the Iono, it will disrupt it, reduce that hand size, reshift what resources are available, so Isaiah now having to rebuild that up, find those combo pieces to get an early knockout potentially, and that Chorus Experiment, finding some good cards, but not those ones to develop what they're trying to achieve here, which is that loss zone count going up. Yeah, all really good cards at different stages of a game or of a matchup. That Temple of Sinnoh could be a great way to bump away a collapsed stadium to give himself space to go wide. The Grass Energy, of course, plays multiple copies of, so can sometimes be an easy choice. Already knows how many Grass Energies are in the deck from his deck search earlier in this game. As we do see the Comfy hitting the board and a Jet Energy to push it into the active spot as well. When you attach it from your hand, you may maneuver Pokemon you attach it to to the active spot. We do see the first flower selecting of our game two now. And that Lost Zone count will be going up to seven. There are three big landmarks for the Lost Zone count. You've got four, which will allow you to attack with the Cramorant, which we see on the bench. Seven, you can start using a Mirage Gate to accelerate energy into play. And then ten, to activate that Star Requiem, the V-Star attack of Giratina, as well as utilizing Sableye's Lost Mine. So hitting the second landmark will open up energy acceleration at this stage, and now Tord will have to play around that. Yeah, this Nest Ball now being utilized here. We'll try and maybe set up some additional Giratina Vs. Typically, you'd want more than just the one. If you're going to start swinging at some point, you're going to need a couple, at least a couple of them ready to go so that you can start chaining attacks of your own, especially if that Charizard is going to have to ramp up his own damage by losing some of the prizes as Tord's right now just kind of Factoring that in, having this Charmander just deal some chip damage away. And if it does get knocked out, those Giratina Vs do start to become within range with a damage modifier in towards deck. Yeah, 30 damage on that Giratina V. Every prize card does another 30 damage for Tord using that Charizard EX. And then you mentioned the Defiance Band. Mm -hmm. Great tool card to increase that damage output, especially without the maximum belt which we've seen featured in a lot of the Charizard EX list, does need to find a way to put more damage 
onto opposing EXs. And that seemed to be the option there. Isaiah in a much more commanding position this time, able to set up. And I feel like as far as setups go, both of these players will be happy with the way these early turns have gone. And so we'll be seeing the true form of how this matchup's meant to go. Yeah, it's a bit of a throwback to pre-rotation um, prior to this European International Championships here, where we had both of these decks flying high in the meta as well, really taking down a lot of tournaments, a lot of games. And we do see the prime catcher of his own here with that Giratina. V-Star now evolved up with that 30 damage that has taken from the heat tackle, targeting down towards support Pokemon. Here we go, first couple of prizes. Looks like it's going to be taken with that lost impact, 280 damage to knock it out. Pidgeot EX has been taken out of play with the first knockout from Isaiah Bradner. Advantage to Isaiah now as Tord has limited ability to set up now with the perfect card. He has the barrel available, Ultra Ball available too. Can he get everything needed now to set up the Charizard? I mean, a great read by Tor to also pick out that barrel from the last turn with a quick search as well, knowing that it is a bit of a target if Isaiah could hit the seven in the lost zone. Now should have, I believe, the nine in the lost zone with the lost impact as well. Two further energies hitting that lost zone area. Just one more flower selecting away potentially, but then being able to utilize Star Requiem as soon as possible. And then... It's just something like an Iron Leaves EX away. If the energy's on the board, that could be one direction Isaiah could take to take the final two and four prizes. Well, with Giratina V-Star having the 30 damage on it, it needs to be knocked out with a Charizard EX, but it also needs the Defiance Band to be in range or a Choice Belt. Yep, the Choice Belt also allowing you to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon V. Card we've been seeing a lot less recently, just out of, you know, the formats going towards a heavier Pokemon EX formats right now. So we do see the energy attachment to the Charmander in the active spot as well. Just kind of double checking what's available. It looks like an Iono and a Fire Energy. Just uh, deciding not to go for that route. With one in hand, I think he wants to try and play that second energy onto the Charmander from hand, but... Is he going to try and draw with that barrel to find the choice belt or the defiance band? Is that the plan here from Tord? Or is he going to try and use the heat tackle to set up the Giratina V-Star? I mean, there's a lot on the line. Maybe even something like the Prime Catcher could come along to knock out the Giratina V on the bench. But that's prized. Yeah, I think it's down to likely to try and target down that Giratina V-Star at first possibility, at first opportunity to be able to do so. Big four cards here from Tord. Here we go. One, two, three, four. With. What's it going to be? Boss's orders, Charmander, Nest Ball, and a Radiant Charizard. So won't be able to knock out the active Giratina V-Star at this stage. Not quite yet. Still the opportunity to do so. I believe the supporter hasn't been played. Or could start to try and target down the Giratina V on the bench as well. That's an option, yeah. Can, can get a two-prize knockout here. But if we have a back-and-forth 2-2-2 two, two, two race, it will go in favor of Isaiah, unless Tord can successfully set up a one-prize board state at the end with the Radiant Charizard. But I think both decks are very good at setting up a one-prize board state, especially now the Iron Leaves can be utilized in the end game as a sudden burst damage out for the Charizard EX. He will need the energy as well, though. So if there's a way to consistently disrupt... Isaiah's hand and board state where possible, maybe removing those energies from play. Of course, right now, Isaiah is board locked, is what we called it. When <gasps> Choice it Belt! Choice Belt hit from the Iono. Massive, as Isaiah has been taking his notes, just to kind of confirm what's going to the bottom of the deck. But a massive pickup here, as Tord will be leveling up the prize race here with that Charizard EX burning darkness attack. Currently dealing 240 damage plus the 30 from the Choice Belt. 270 damage here. Oh, you seldom see a turn like that after a Pidgeot EX is taken out of play, but with Tord having that backup of the Barrel, drew plenty of cards pre Iono, and then as soon as they got those fresh six, it was pretty likely to see the Choice Belt or the Defiance Band going through so much of that deck. You're seeing 10 cards pretty much when you're 
laying down your hand for that industrious incisors draw, and then the Iono, whilst also disrupting your opponent, removing a grass energy from play as well. So no easy attacker for Isaiah going forward right now with this knockout. And there it is, announcement. Burning Darkness KO, four prizes remaining for both of our players here in this Masters Final. That Prime Catcher still stuck in those prizes for the moment, though. Yeah, it's also fair to note that the Charizard EX that's in the active spot was the one that evolved through the Charmeleon. So if Tord were to try and set up another Charizard, it would have to be the combination pieces of Rare Candy and Charizard EX. And with one of the Charizard EX in the prize card, you know, we're expecting a lot of Fortunate turns here for Tord if he is to set up a following attacker. I mean, the Radiant Charizard is an option with just the one energy required you know, to navigate these final turns. That should yeah, be intriguing. Double checking what's been put down to the bottom of the deck as he does Flower Select first. A couple of options there. I think he did hit a Mirage Gate into hand from the Iono as well. It's just what pieces of the puzzle are you able to conjure up here, Isaiah? Another grass energy hitting the lost zone. Well, that poker gear will be able to find a supporter. The question is, will he try and shuffle the deck first? No, recognizing that the cards put to the bottom from the Iron O were not the cards he wants at this stage. So we'll be able to look through those. Any supporter there? No, no supporter. Big miss. So we'll highlight the two grass energies in the lost zone right now. One gone to the this card as well, following that knockout of that Giratina V-Star. Just the four copies of Grass Energy needs both of them for that Prism Edge attack of Iron Leaves EX. Well, still has the Star Requiem available, but that requires a Grass Energy requires too. One. Yep. So there's a lot of juggling of the Grass Energy. It's a, it's a tough decision now which way you go with the knockout here. If you can get the Star Requiem, that's the dream, but we mentioned how important that disruption was. The Iono to four against a lost engine does reduce that hand size, does reduce the options available. So Isaiah now has a lot to do to get back into this attacking position. Does also have to try and protect that Giratina V as well. Right now with just 220 HP, is susceptible to a very simple knockout from a Charizard EX. Well, V star required. <laughs> Yeah, the V-Star, really an important card to find at this stage. One of the hardest cards to find in the Giratina list, typically, as many of the lists don't even play any bull search for it. You know, just looking for natural draw, but like we said, he does play that one-off Ultra Ball. But real struggle here as we send up the other Confe now, another flower selecting. What you got there off that flower selecting, I mean, no instant decision. Typically, if there's something you're looking for and you see it off of a flower selecting, it goes straight to the hand. But Isaiah just taking the due diligence here, making sure it's exactly the right decision. No mistakes in this grand final. And what have we got? Smaller hand following that Iono as well. Seeing pieces, that switch is currently being decided on. It hits the lost zone there. We've increased to 11, so we're beyond that threshold of 10. Another jet energy being utilized for concealed cars. Not your usual chorus experiment and Ultra Ball. Oh, wow. Perfect timing there. As we need that Ultra Ball for the Giratina V Star, the chorus experiment, huge now to keep going through that deck, thinning out some of those less useful cards. And it's just down to Isaiah whether they Ultra Ball first, which they will be to try and get that Giratina V Star, or whether they wait till afterwards. But they are now able to take a knockout if they're able to get the Giratina V Star into the active spot. And that Chorus Experiment further improving this turn. It just shows you how much dig there is with the Flower selecting the Concealed cards. And that's exactly why the Radiant Greninja is in here, despite no Water Energy. I'm hoping everyone here watching on the stream, in this venue, following along as well, does have Chaos Catcher in hand maybe for future turns if necessary. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a playable card. But... I believe there may have been three Mirage Gates across the game, across the board that have been utilized already. One in the Lost Zone has been using one for this Giratina V on the bench, and then one for the previous one. So there's only one remaining to just burst energy onto the board state. Iron Leaves in that Chorus, I think. And the Super Rod has got to be pretty vital here. 
You're going to be getting rid of a chorus experiment potentially here. That's when you know you're seeing lots of valuable cards when you're removing such a powerful supporter. Likely on the future turns wanting to utilize that Roxanne rather than a chorus experiment if possible. There we go. Giratina Vista in play. Star Requiem is possible to use as the Lost Zone count is above 10. The Charizard EX in the active spot will be knocked out. Has already lost zone that switch, so giving the tell that there is a way to maneuver out of that comfy in the active spot. Let's hope so, because I mean, the, <laughs> that's the only piece missing, and I haven't quite seen the hand, whether that's possible. Maybe not, but can wait a turn. I mean, losing one prize here isn't too much of a problem. Getting chip damage on that Giratina V. Star. We haven't seen an energy attachment, but we have seen a retreat, so. There we go. There's a psychic energy attached. Quite a big decision here. Now, free energy is just a pass over to Tord Reklev. Initiative on you, Tord, how you will play out this turn. Rare candy in hand. Charmander pick up from the Tord deck. Has boss's orders, I believe. He's just moved to the front of his hand. A key factor here is the choice belt was the, uh, the tool card utilized by the Charizard EX to take the knockout on the Giratina V-Star. Can be used in combination with that Radiant Charizard to guarantee 280 damage onto a Giratina V-Star. But now, the only way that Radiant Charizard can hit for 280 is by utilizing a Defiance Band, which requires the prize cards to be higher for Tord than Isaiah. And there we go. The boss's order is going to be taken to the active, getting some damage it's not enough to knock out but it puts it in range of something like that charmander with the heat tackle yeah 270 damage here 240 from the burning darkness attack the choice belt increasing it to 270 10 hp remaining on this giratina v star i mean this is one way to get your pokemon that you want to be utilizing to switch into <laughs> the active spot but ideally wouldn't have wanted to see that many damage counters on it yeah, Tor just said, Isaiah, you wanted that Giratina V-Star in the active? I can help you out, as that has now got 10 HP remaining. I mean, there's some attackers in Tor's list that could probably knock this out that I've never seen attack. Can the Pidgey knock it out? I mean... Yeah, he's got that tackle for 20. He does we need <laughs> two energies, though. Not ideal. Um, wouldn't be the most efficient attacker. I think the heat tackle is probably the most utilized here for just that one fire energy. I mean, it's... damage reason why it's been popularized as the more utilized Charmander across the Charizard X that we've seen. Now Isaiah has to navigate what we're seeing here. The, the Shuppet being put down will allow him to chain supporters like the Roxanne in those final turns. Yeah, if he's able to pull it out of the prizes, I believe still. The Boss's orders in the, oh yeah, the puppet, puppet offerings in the prizes. The prizes but you know, it's filling, the, it's filling the deck, but it's also getting a potentially very useful card um, onto the board, say, as Star Requiem is activated there, V-Star ability, an instant knockout once you're able to get 10 cards into the Lost Zones, has missed that Puppet Offering for net, so won't be able to utilize that as a way of maybe safe guarding yourself away from something like a Disruption Supporter. But it's on Tord now. We do see that Heat Tackle Charmander in the active spot. It's going to be over KOing this Giratina V-Star if he uses Heat Tackle. Yeah, when we caught up with him before the match, he was very particular about this situation now. He said, I can take those knockouts and set up to use that Radiant Charizard in the final yes. moment. Yep. And by leaving just one prizes in play, the power output of Isaiah's list with the Iron Leaves and the Giratina V-Star won't be able to knock out anything there for two prizes and with Jirachi on board, Sableye also not an option. So Tor trying to set up a one prize end game. Possibly here, you'd want to be attacking with your Radiant Charizard. It's big enough of a Pokemon with HP to be out of range of that Cramoran to force a one single prizer. That means Isaiah would then have to put a two prizer to try and knock it out or find a way to gust around it. But that's one way for Tor to maybe mitigate losing a prize to Isaiah and just allowing Isaiah to go down to one prize. I mean, there's also just the combination of putting a big Charizard EX into the active and disrupting in that final turn. That's uh, another key aspect of this matchup. Many people forget how powerful disruption in combination with a 330 HP active Pokemon can be. Yeah, you're right. But you just have to be fearful that Iron Leaves EX, Mike, it's hiding around somewhere. Super Rods are still in the deck. 
those grass energies may be out on the field that Tor can see, but Super Rock can replenish those, and Mirage Gate can quickly put them onto the board, an energy attachment from hand, and then Iron Leaves can come in with that Rapid Vernia and just take a big swing knockout. I mean, what you've just described is a lot of pieces. It is a lot of pieces. So that would be asking a lot. Isaiah now having to work with small hand sizes after the Iron Nose of both turn. Now the Charmander is going to be taking the knockout. This Charmander was MVP in Tord's semi-final match as it knocked out an opposing Charizard EX. And it looks like it's a poised and ready to take down the Giratina V-Star. The little Charmander that could is ready to heat tackle, whereas Isaiah is waiting with not many options available. After that collapse stadium, in removing a Comfey. Barrel, industrious incisors, getting that back online once again. This allows you to get your board state ready. Pidgeot and Arvin ready for future turns as well. Does have the energy for the Radiant Charizard. He's gone for the play that I've mentioned. Combustion Blast live with that excited heart ability. Able to take a massive knockout now that Isaiah has taken four prizes. 160 HP behemoth, as it were. Ah, oh, the little Charmander that could. Taking a back seat. Let the shiny Charizard do the work for a moment there. But the other bit of Combustion Blast is important to note here. Cannot attack during your next turn. Has a three retreat cost. So now it's in the active. It does create some issues for Tord potentially about chaining attacks. But sometimes you could just wait. Because it's only single prizes on the board. As is unable to take the knockout on a Radiant Charizard without a bigger attacker. And it still gives Tord another chance to just draw into the Professor Truro scenario, reset it if necessary, or just swing again on one more turn. Especially when Isaiah's playing with so few cards. Gonna have to try and find a way around this situation. Despite having limited resources, you can see how much he's trying to think through this situation. The most pressure he's felt in a Pokemon TCG game to try and take down that final boss in Tord Reklev, limited Resources, limited time, and we'll be using those flower selecting to try and find that much needed resource in these final moments of game two. One of those cards we lost to rotation, escape rope would be incredible here, but even that the barrel could tank a hit, as we saw in game one as well, 120 HP. So, one of those cards we miss as we do see a switch here into the Cramorant. Looks like it's likely to just be a swing. There's that Bonnet EX in hand as well. I mean, it's with the Cramorant, it's so tough because it's a water type Pokemon taking a swing with 110 damage into a fire type Pokemon that's weak to water, but Spit Innocently isn't affected by weakness, so it will just do 110 there into the Radiant Charizard, which is recharging from using that Combustion Blast in last turn. Cannot attack during this turn. Now Tord has to try and find a way to re-establish everything, and found that rare candy, I believe, off the top deck. There's the Pidgeot there. It has Prime Catcher to maneuver around as well, so can continue swinging, but has now put a two-prizer in play. Not anything to worry about, no Giratina around. So plenty of HP to just tank a hit if necessary. So I believe the Prime Catcher was off the prize cards. We have the rare candy off the top deck, oh, finding is... everything needed now can even find anything off of that quick search, could disrupt again if wanted. Tord is in prime position here to take down this destabilized board state of Isaiah. Isaiah got the iron leaves available if wanted to try and knock out a Charizard EX, but Tord said, if I don't put a Charizard EX in play, that's not gonna work. So final stages here, setting up a barrel. Pidgeot EX available, has that Charizard EX available for next turn, but I doubt he's gonna wanna put it into play. Not yet. Holding on to it, I'm sure. But remember that quick search allows him to also utilize Professor Chura's scenario once again, if necessary, if it doesn't get knocked out by this Cramorant. That Jirachi causing chaos as well. So Sableye's never a utilized attacker in this scenario. Quick search here. Grab any card you want from your deck. How do you want to telepath the next turn? Super Rod, it looks like, going down as an option. So many different options available for Tord Reklev. Last couple of turns, I'm, I'm getting to that moment there. Super Rod being played. Actually Just got the Professor Tiro scenario off the prize cards alongside that Prime Catcher. A 
And this super rod just going to get back all those important options in the final turns, especially as there's only six fire energy in the list. Yeah, really important to grab that Luminion ready as well, as we do see the Arvin come down now, following that rare candy into the Pidgeot EX, quick search utilized, and then that Arvin just to grab any pieces he wants, options to get that Forest Seal Stone and Luminion at some stage, Defiance Band also available, even just to use it as discard fodder if necessary. I don't think you can oh, wait, take... not both, yeah. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> you can tools. take those there two. Go, there's the Ultra Ball. <laughs> yeah, just both players there, keeping each other in check. Uh, just gathering all the tools to the front of the deck there for the Arvin. The Ultra Ball here, probably just to thin cards that aren't needed. Just to have that option of that Luminion V on the next turn with the Forest Seal Stone in combination. Tord Wrecker playing out potentially his penultimate turn here to wrestle away and take away another IC from anyone else but himself and try and push himself into a five time international champion accolade. Well, who better than Tord Reklev to show us exactly how Charizard X should be played? The most popular deck in post rotation. We always know Tord can cook the mightiest lists of the decks we expect to see do well. And he's attempting to do it once again here. It was at LAIC with the return of his title. Lugia V-Star came into the, to the game and he showed exactly how it should be played. A few different cards to the rest of the field was enough to take him to that victory. He's going to try and do the same thing again here with Charles RDX. Isaiah, so much to do on this turn. No liabilities on Tord's board that can be knocked out for two prize cards. What can you do here, Isaiah? There's a Super Rod being eyed up here. He does have to get those energies at some point back into the deck. Has an opportunity to use as an attacker here. That Combustion Blast, unable to be utilized once again, of course. But with Quick Search as an out, maybe has access to that Professor Truro scenario. I mean, be reset very quickly. Do you attack with the Iron Leaves still and just try and disrupt and hope that the Charizard X pieces aren't available? I mean, we've spoken about it. You still need so many pieces just to kind of weave in an attack from the Iron Leaves EX. As we do see a flower selecting, look at the top two cards, put one into your hand, one into the Lost Zone. Psychic Energy, decision there. What was that card, Isaiah? Do you have a chance? There's a concealed card of that Grass Energy goes, Boss's Orders. Oh, Roxanne. Roxanne. There's a chance. Is there a world? Giratina V hits the board. We're at the point now. Anything could be knocked out so that Giratina V can come down. Okay. Roxanne, shuffle your hand in. Draw six. Tord Reklev, shuffle your hand in. Draw two. But the Barrel and Pidgey IX are in play. You have two cards that are allowed to get you out of this Roxanne situation. You can draw up to five with the Barrel, find any card you need with the Pidgey IX. So... Yes, it might seem like there's a lot of combo pieces needed here for Tord with that rare candy and a Charizard EX, but at any moment you can find one of those pieces from the Barrel and find the other one with the Pidgeot EX. So now Tord will be disrupted and Isaiah will need to find a knockout this turn without leaving any liabilities in that active spot. Lefra and Buddy Buddy popping in Tord's hand. Mirage Gate there with a Super Rod as well, so that's a couple of pieces. And the Switch... But what else can you weave in here? What is available for yourself? You can get a knockout with the Cramorant and just hope that the disruption is enough. That's asking a lot. Maybe that's all Isaiah can do at this stage. That's the Nest Ball as well. So even, even, it was, if, it, even if he was to target a Pokemon, that Rapid Vernier would not be able to be utilized because you have to play it by hand. But even with something like the Mirage Gate, we still need a Grass Energy either on the board or in hand to be able to attach as well. So Super Rod is utilized here. We don't necessarily need to use the Iron Leaves now. The Shred of Giratina V would be enough to knock out the active and would put Giratina V into a strong position to be potentially out of range. But I think a lot of Isaiah's plan is just hoping that that Roxanne has done enough. There is a world where, you know, as you draw with that barrel, you find none of the combo pieces needed to evolve that Charmander up. Right, you need two pieces to evolve it up. That rare candy and a Charizard, but Barrel will do its best to try and get there. 
can play his hand down as well once a Pokemon is knocked out. So Clefin could hit the board. Well, the Poffin could be played first, of course, and then the Clefin can hit the board. And then there's a fresh draw of four, at least four. Well, I think I'm going to ask all the questions here, I think. Exactly. I think at this stage, we are going to be seeing that Cramorant attack. And Isaiah will just be relying quite heavily here on that Roxanne. It's been the MVP for so many people throughout the tournament. We mentioned how powerful a card it was for Tord during the semi-final. Mm -hmm. That just begins to scratch the surface of how much Roxanne has done in this tournament. So now Isaiah, one last time, will be crossing his fingers for that Roxanne. Hoping it does enough. The knockout, one prize card remaining each. Can Tord find the knockout this turn? Off of this draw. The okay. barrel there. There's an energy. That's fine. Attachment to the Charmander. If he can evolve up, of course. So many cards in there. You don't want to draw off the barrel. Yeah, you don't want to be putting a card down here because you want to be maybe putting down that Cleffer just to make sure that hand draw is as high as possible. Lots of outs. Things like the Luminion are an option too. Two rare candies, I see. Ultra Ball for the Charizard EX as well. Fire Energy to bring that hand down. We'll be seeing a fresh five. He just benches that Cleffa and an attachment. Could have put the Buddy Buddy Poffin uh, Pokemon down, but doesn't want to because he needs to leave that space for the hand. Or whether he wants to leave the space for the Luminion as well as an option. Lots to think about here for Tord to optimize this <laughs> end game draw <laughs> after the Roxanne. It's great to see both players still enjoying it, I think, as there is. Didn't want to be the one to cut it. Didn't want to um, <laughs> give up his fate by cutting it here for Tord. As we do see the energy attachment there. The barrel for five. Before, I think, left Before, the Clefer in hand. What have you got here? Charizard EX in hand. One more piece of the puzzle. And that's going to be it. The rare candy from the Pidgeot EX will find the evolution needed. Charizard EX, the knockout. Tord Reklev is your European International Champion five-time international champion and the greatest player of the modern era. From finalist of 2023 to champion of 2024, what a story. Tord Reklev, congratulations. You are the Masters TCG champion. Isaiah Bradner tried so hard to make his way to this final. He made it and just couldn't quite find the combination to take down Charizard EX. You saw how rough it was in game one, not quite drawing as planned, but with the disruption being thrown his way from Tord, it was just too much in those final turns. But congratulations to both players. I mean, making it to the final alone was an achievement in itself, but Tord just keeps on winning. Be proud. What a run to the finals. For Isaiah Bradner, once again, unfortunately fallen short, but I mean to only fall short to two of the best players at ICs in Azul and now Tord Reklev. You know, you just have to pat yourself on the back. He'll come again. We know he will. He's been here before. Massive congratulations for both our players for making it to this TCG's Masters Final and giving us a fantastic show. And thank you to everyone in the crowd. You guys have been amazing and in particular for all those highlight moments you guys were getting involved. There was tension during the middle of the